Good morning, my name is Leon Matthews and I'm in Pine Ridge, South Dakota. And I wanted to talk to you this morning. It's, it's morning, maybe night where you are. But um, one of the things that I wanted to talk to you today about was the medicine law. And there's a huge controversy around the country, you know, about Christians are what I call Native American followers of Christ or American Indian followers of Christ. You know, I myself am a Lakota follower of Christ. And there's been a huge controversy over the last few years about redemptive theology. You know, what can we redeem? What, what, what should we keep? What should we, you know, discard? And when I think about, you know, the, the reality of, of who I am as a Lakota man, you know, I, I share briefly that, that who I am is my ancestors. And my ancestors are from from Mundini, from Slim Buttes, from Standing Rock. And I had my grandmother, Pearl, you know, she was actually from the Standing Rock Reservation. She was part of the sitting bull, Teoshpai, that family. And and so, so over the years, you know, one of the things that has come about is, is as followers of Christ, you know, how can we, you know, know that we're Indian? And it's like, and, and do we turn into white people? And basically, you know, it's kind of an interesting, you know, discussion because a lot of people talk about the white man's gospel. Of course, Jesus wasn't white. He's Mediterranean. He had a lot of people, you know, he, I mean, follow him and they weren't white. And then, but the, but the message of Christ came through Europe and then over to America. And so, you know, that's why, you know, the, a lot of people misconstrue that, that the Bible or the way of Jesus is the white man's religion, which is far from the truth. But um, you know, I wanted to talk to you briefly about the medicine wheel because the medicine medicine wheel is a very powerful, you know, part of Lakota thought. And and when you think about Lakota thought, you have to understand that this was derived from many many years ago, centuries ago. And there was no alcohol, there was no drugs, and, and people thought about this, and they thought about the four parts of life. And, you know, in Lakota way, you know, the, the number four is sacred as well as seven. So when you think about this, you know, there's a lot of controversy about, you know, what we can have, but this is a very powerful tool. I've talked to psychiatrists, I've talked to, you know, psychologists, I've talked to people that do therapy, and this is very powerful. And I want to start off with showing you a symbol. And it doesn't really matter, and I hope it comes out better with this marker. But here's, here's where we begin, all right? I have a friend, I have a friend that lives in um, Minnesota. And he, uh, you know, I asked him about this, this symbol. I said, where, where did it come from? And he said, I was going around in some of the most, the oldest temples in the world in Southeast Asia. And he would see this symbol, whether it's the other way or this way, it doesn't really matter. But in, South, in the Southwest, there are some tribes that use this symbol. And, and what this is, is I know you're thinking, this, well, that's a Nazi symbol, that's a swastika. But actually, Hitler took this symbol and he used it for his game. He used it as, a, as something to bring his people together. But what I like to say is, and hopefully it comes out, because with a marker it works better. I actually cut a little bit off, so we'll fix that. <laughs> and, you know, so basically it, it comes out as a medicine wheel, all right? And, you know, my, my mentor, one of my mentors, Chris Eaglehawk, you know, he actually showed me this, the, the power symbol of the swastika. But he said what it is, is it's a broken medicine wheel. And what this is, is it's, a, it's basically a power symbol, all right? A power symbol, you know, why? Because it has the power to change our lives. You know, there are some Christians that will actually make this longer and say there's a cross and a, and a medicine wheel. But we're not talking about that. What we're talking about is um, 
you know, the, the medicine wheel, the chongleshka, as Lakota people refer to. There are four aspects of it. There's the mind, the physical, and it doesn't really matter where you put this, and then the, the emotional, the emotional, and then here's the spiritual, all right? The spiritual. All right, there are four aspects of this, of this, what I'm talking about today. The mind, I mean, we need to find people, and this is gonna help you come into balance. We need to find people that are smarter than us, that are wiser. You know, that includes elders, you know, people in different professions that are very smart and intelligent. You know, we need to use our minds. We need to look at tapes, we need to read books, we need to um, listen to, or read self-help books. You know, that's a great way to, to, to do, to, to work on its books, tapes, you know, those are very important. Elders, you know, this, this will help create a healthy mind, all right? When you need advice, you go to your elders. You go to people that are smarter than you. The physical, food, eating right. Eating right is very important to, the, to our health as people. But also, one of the things that's very important for this is exercise. Now this morning, you know, a few years ago, I, I weighed close to 300 pounds. And I know the camera adds 10 pounds, but basically what's interesting is that I realized that I was eating too much. And, and so I made a, a, a conscious decision that I would actually change my diet. And so I changed my diet and lost about 60, 60 pounds. And, and now I'm in that, at that stage where, where I want to lose some more, but, but I need to keep eating good food, which is more protein, less carbs, and I need to exercise. This morning I did some stretching exercise, and, and hopefully you know, I'll begin to play some more basketball and do some things, get my cardio up. You know, those are very important things for our physical. So this is what we're doing is we're trying to walk in balance, all right? Now this emotional, you know, one of the things that you have to understand as human beings is that we're very emotional. You know, men are taught not to cry, women are taught to cry, you know, and it's like, and women seem to be more emotional, but we as human beings are created emotionally. And what you have to understand if you're gonna walk in balance is that you and you, you, you and you yourself alone are the only person that could actually control your emotions. You know, you shouldn't let any outside, you know, influences control your emotions. You have to control it. And when you control it, you become healthy, all right? And so you have to not, if, if people talk about you and they gossip about you, they say things about you, who cares? They're not on your team, you know? So, so it's like, don't let it get to you emotionally, all right? There's some times where you have to be angry and you have to be upset, but, but you control that. And that's a very important part of walking in balance. Now the spiritual. Now here's a word that, that isn't used. I think that's how you do it. And very often. Basically, what this says is that it's, it's the Holy Spirit. All right? The spiritual. Now I'm a follower of Christ. You know, and... You know, one of the things that's really interesting is that I thought about it the other day and I thought, what makes me a follower of Christ? And it's because I had a real experience of, of walking down the street and crying out to, to the Creator and asking the Creator to introduce Himself to me. And I was eight years old. I mean, this is when that took place. I was eight years old. It took four years for me to keep hearing about this person of Jesus. Jesus and people kept coming to me and talking about that but eventually <clears throat> eventually I accepted Christ into my life when I was 12 years old and and it changed my life it changed who I was at the at the core of me you know it doesn't make me less ended but it makes me more 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 of a complete person because I live by the code you know there's a lot of things that have gone on in this in, in Native America that has really tripped us up you know, one of the things, it's like, how do you negotiate around this idea of what, what the church has done to, to the American Indians? They were used as a weapon 
the church was weaponized to kill the Indian and save the man. And what they did is they took away a beautiful life. You know, people walking, you know, being physical, being, you know, controlling their emotions, you know, talking to the elders and, and reading, you know, not reading books, but searching the stars and thinking through things and developing philosophies. And this was a beautiful way of life. And it's a balanced way of life. And this is how we, as human beings, need to live. You know, one of the things I talked about, you know, and this is just a short part of the, the medicine wheel, the, 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 the Changlashka, as Lakota people call it. But if you have all of these four areas in your life balanced, this is what happens. And this is very powerful, is you get your social life comes into balance. The people you were around, the people you visit, I mean, the social part, your, your, your significant other, you know, that will come into balance as well. But not only that, this is the most exciting thing. If you're walking in a, in a very balanced life and you're, you're growing because knowledge is the key to change, you gain more knowledge and then you, you can change your surroundings. You're physically fit, so you can work and you can you can exercise. You, you eat right. You have you're having fun. Your emotions. Nobody's getting your goat, <laughs> and uh, you're you're in control of your emotions. That's very important. And then the spiritual. The spiritual is like you need to seek out the Creator. You know, I found the Creator, Waka, or Nahi Waka. You know, Takushkashka. Lakota people have sought that out, and and now who I know through the Holy Spirit is Jesus. You know, I'm not going to debate whether or not, you know, why am I a Christian? I mean, I already told you, I'm, I'm a follower of Christ because I met Jesus on 23rd Avenue in Denver, Colorado. <laughs> it wasn't on the road to Damascus for sure, but my spiritual life, you know, I'm, I'm reading the Bible, I'm developing you know, I'm reading, I'm listening to, to other people that, that hold to the, to the Bible and its truth. And I seek that out with my heart, soul, and mind. You know, and then I hopefully, I walk in a more balanced life. But this is what's really cool. When you look at it, you know, what do, what do most people want in life? You know, I've, I was asked that question yesterday. I said, they want their relationships right? And they want, to, they want to be able to take care of themselves and their family, the financial. And these two keys right here, the financial, the financial and the social, <coughs> are very important. But, but as you seek to balance your life in all these four areas, and you know, a lot of times you will see psychiatry take this out, the spiritual. This is probably the most important, you know, in your spiritual life. But as we see these balance, we will see them come together and, and be, you know, whole. So that's my teaching on, on the medicine wheel. You know, I know it's very um, simple right now, but it's developing. You know, I, you talked to me a month ago, and, and I never really thought of Nafi Waka, you know, the Holy Spirit, how that plays a role in our lives as Lakota and as, as followers of Christ, you know. And, the exercise, I mean, I'm exercising more, I'm getting stronger, I'm trying to eat right, I'm reading lots of books, you know, elders are important, you know, we need to have elders in our lives, you know, so th this is the medicine. I'm Leon Matthews, and thank you, and have a great day.